Hello and welcome to the Abath 500e. This is a car which for me is a bigger deal than people give it credit for because it's the first electric hot hatch. That's going to divide the comment section and we do touch on that later on in the video but for me this is the, word, the first one. It's the one where the manufacturers actually come out and said it's a hot hatch. It's here for, here for one specific purpose, to be fun. It's not a long distance cruiser, it's not here to ferry a family of four around. It's just got one job to be, well, exciting to drive. The Abarth way, if you will. That's all I expect, so does it give me that? Clearly, this is based on the Fiat 500, but that's not a bad thing. We really like that car and highly rate it for what is very unique in EV world, a small car. And look, can you see? It's not a crossover. It's not an SUV. It's a small little hatch. Brilliant. Clear differences, the RLs, a lot more aggressive front bumper compared to the Fiat 500, so that is exactly what we're after. It looks in these colours, there's this one and the uh, acid green one, standoutish shall we say again aggressive grill the white bit at the bottom the abarth logo on the front rather than the fiat of course and there's just a few cosmetic changes it sits lower so this has got different springs the uh, shocks have been changed and of course it's been designed to be a lot more sporty handling so you've got just a, a more squat aggressive slightly wider appearance so it fits the bill given what they've had to work with it's loud enough without going too far for me. You'll see it coming, don't get me wrong, but that's partly due to the colour. I just think they've got that nice combination of Fiat 500 cuteness with a bit of punch it in your face sort of look. This for me is its most robust angle. The kind of wide arch rear, three door of course, wide doors, very familiar with the Fiat 500. Quite low down relative again to the car it's based on. I just think it's got a very nice stance and for the first time on an Abarth, 18 inch wheels as an option. You got the Scorpion logo, which you should be familiar with, with the lightning bolt through it, which is the new one for obviously their electric range. And you got a little spoiler going on. And it's just, again, it's like a Fiat 500 dialed up. It looks good anywhere. It's one of those classless cars again. Posh house, not so posh house, big estate, country estate like this. It just seems to fit everywhere. And for me, it's just cheeky. Obviously at the back, for any Arbath purists out there, there's no quad exhausts or anything like that, clearly, it's electric. But they've done what they can. It's very similar, other than maybe the Arbath badge to the 500 once more. The boot, exactly the same as the previous 500. Surprisingly big, but not massive. Again, it's a small city car, so I'm not sure what people expect sometimes. Charging's pretty much the same as the Fiat 500. You've got 85 kilowatts, CCS of course, which, I'd like it to be above 100, but I guess on a battery this size, you can just about get away with it. Right, on the inside, you will see it's very familiar to the Fiat 500 once again, because it's the same car, essentially. So the steering wheel on this top spec version, it's got like an Alcantara feel. You've got some hardware and plastic, again, that you might be familiar with the previous one. You do have this lovely double stitching, which is around the cabin. I'll show you that in a second. And the standard switch gear that most people I've already seen on the other cars. So if I just turn that on there, you get a bit of a jingle, I'm not sure why. This here is very clear to see. You can affect what it does by the steering wheel. I won't go through everything, but effectively it's a virtual cockpit and it gives you lots of information. Over 10 inch infotainment system here, which is okay. I mean, the, the buttons are a little small to use, so when you're bouncing around on a road, it is quite difficult to get the right spot, but it's reasonably quick. Um, I've seen better, but it could do CarPlay and the usual stuff, so that pretty much covers all bases. All the actual manual buttons for the uh, climate control. Buttons! Actual buttons, instead of doing it through there, and instead of a gear lever, you've got drive, park, reverse and neutral. Sports mode, or rather, scorpion track mode, Armrest moves forwards and backwards. It does feel quite nice. And if you lift it up, you got some more storage that goes down there. So that's quite deep, some closed storage. That's good. Down here, you've got again more, more storage that goes all the way down. 
with two different USB types and the uh, 12 volt adapter, and you can close it off as well. Glove box, what, what do you think? Well, we kind of know because we've done the Fiat 500. <laughs> but Yay! It's full, it's not too bad. At least it is full width. Yeah. Here on this particular version, you have wireless charging for your phone. Press that button to open the door. So there's no actual, you know, door handle per se, although there is a manual release just in case there's an electrical fault. And the seats, this the is particular seats highlight. Are amazing. Mm. Look at them. Again, high spec version, so they're not standard, but I just I like I the think stitching. You'd, yeah, you'd want to go for these, wouldn't you? And the Scorpion logo, of course, the Abath one. That's Bits nice. of scorpion everywhere in here, isn't there? Yeah, you've got it all over the place. Little Again, little Easter eggs. you got the sunroof on this, which makes it feel much brighter, weirdly so, than even the convertible version convertible, of this. Convertible, yeah, yeah. Because the convertible is all black, unless you have the roof open, which means when it's raining, you're in a it's, very dark environment. Yeah, it's nicer like this, I think. You do have some cheap plastics around, or hardware in plastics, again, around here. But... I'm not really expecting anything else. But generally, what you're touching most yeah. of the time is of a good quality. That feels beautiful. That's all right. Matter. Yeah, the seats are really, really nice again Even for this one. Even the rear seats. Do you know what? It's not brilliant. <laughs> and that that's in a, a an adult's position, but not for a tall six no. foot two, three and sort of person. Head, yeah, do you know what? It's not adults in the back, put it that way. It, it's right, kids yeah. in the back, in there. Which again, I kind of think that's expected from a Fiat 500. A bath have put audio on the outside. So think of it like the piped in audio you see on lots of cars and Harry's just gonna demonstrate it for us. So this is just on my lapel mic. He's revving it. Now some of you will love that, some of you will hate it. So driving around you've got a rumble that's at this speed okay, I would say. I would say it's okay. But when you put your foot down a little bit, Now obviously there's a lot of wind noise, probably overshadowing that, so let's put the windows up. It's a drone, isn't it? On the motorway, that's going to get very annoying. If whoever hates this, then I think it'll get a lot of stick, won't I think it will, yeah. Just, you just leave it off. And they've spent two years developing this. 6,000 hours. Yeah, and that is essentially using our bath engine noises. Yeah. Not just pro. It is the bath engine yeah, noises. They've recorded it. it and put it in certain bits. Synthesised it or whatever yeah. they need to do. But the thing is, you get synthesised noise on most cat sports cars now, even like m 3 they pump them through the speakers, don't they? Yeah, yeah. So internally, this is quite ordinary. It's not, it's not unusual. Yeah, yeah. They've just done it externally. Yeah. The last time I've drove, the one thing that this does better than that is that they, I feel like I'm lower down in the car, the seat's oh, seat sat position. so much more comfortably. You're, you're quite high up in the uh, in the, in the abafts, the, the, the petrol ones, if you like. I felt like I was perched on the car. Yeah, so the seating position's After a lot better. The steering's very very pointy, isn't it? Yeah, very darty. There's quite a bit of feel as well. You know, I think it has the look, so, doesn't it? This has got to be the first proper hot hatch. And I say proper because the Mini could be classed as one, but doesn't particularly look like one. Should we do that now then? Let's get that out of what the way. What is an electric hot hatch? Have we had one? No. Yet? I wouldn't say we've had a hot hatch. What about the BMW i3s? I don't think it's a hot hatch back though, it doesn't... Is yeah. it too expensive to be a hot hatch? Because the general tend to be, they should be more affordable and if it was still sold today, it'd be in the high 40s. It's a hatch, it's got, it's a sportier version than the i3. Tick, tick. Tick, yep. Uh, it's quick. Mini electric, hot hatch or not? Well, do you know, I would have said yes, but having, having, having obviously we've had a chat before this, I would say no, because it, it, it's not not the works, is it? You look at it, do you know when we see all the mini electric one at uh, Goodwood, when they put the GP3? Oh, it had the body kit. Yeah. That was, was a hot hatch. That was a hot it hatch. It needs to look it, look it as well. It needs to have, it can be subtle, but it needs to have something where you go, flared arches, uh, you know, some, Aggressive some, cra grill. some crazy styling. It I mean, just needs yeah. that, that sets it apart, which, you know, not everybody would see, but enough pe people who know would know. This is going to divide the comment section. So, have we had an EV that already that would be classified as a hot hatch? The Mini for me just doesn't make it based not on quite the there, is it? No. I mean, it handles the, the, yeah, the low yeah. weight of the batteries are actually helping in some respects. You can feel the weight compared to the standard Abarth. The, yeah, you can. Yeah, the, as in the petrol Abarth. The strange thing is with the sound. It keeps making me think I'm doing a different speed. I get a bit of, if anything, the sound is giving me a bit of a disconnect from what the car's doing. 
rather than yeah. pulling me in, it's pushing me away. I'm, I'm thinking I'm d- turn yeah, it doing off. a different speed. So yeah, yeah. yeah, I think I'd rather have just just the sound of what the car makes without that. <laughs> when I first saw how much power this had, I had reservations about it being a hot hatch. But yeah, driving but, it. But the Abarth's haven't got a lot of power, have they? No, 180, I think, but is the, the. But the the front. Yeah, the front. Yeah, which I think that's that's what it retains. Like the mini, though, the mini retains the the feeling of being a mini. Yes. But yes. it just doesn't it's look just like it goes. So we'll go through a few specs. Let's do that. I've got them written down from the presentation. 34, just over 34 grand. The Abarth this essentially starts at and Which it goes all the way up to nearly uh, just up 42 for the top spec let's not pretend that's cheap that is not cheap but however it's pretty it's com- unique it is and they did say this is essentially aimed at more affluent people yeah premium market you know what a mini buyer mini electric starts at 32 and a half at the moment for a level two and i think i'd have this i'd have this honda e was touted as a bit of a premium rival but I, I wouldn't class that as a hot hatch or anything no 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 that but yeah, I could see why they would because it's yeah. in that similar pricing bracket well there's not much around is there that's the... no 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 and uh, of course the Mini we've already mentioned what about the MG4 when the dual motor comes out the X-Power MG4 so the car we're signing right now is about three and a half After grand more yards. than the entry level than the MG4 X-Power oh wow with 430 brake horsepower it does depend how, how good that is. It might just be a lot of power and now, that's it. For me, though, that's not a hot hatch. It's too powerful for that. It's supercar from 10, 20 years ago it level is, with yeah. that. So that, for me, is a I don't know, super hatch. What, what's the next thing? I think, is it, it's it's got, Golf R instead of Golf GTI. Yeah. Straight ahead. Right, so it's got 152 brake horsepower. The standard higher-powered Fiat 500 has about 112, 13. So it's, it's got it's, a sizeable size size increase, yeah. enough for me. 235 newton meters of torque, which is where the in-gear acceleration is It feels from. very torquey. Yep. Yeah. Um, and it's got a much closer to 50-50 weight distribution compared to the 500 and the Abarths. But then you've got that extra, th- I think it's about 350 kilogram-ish weight over the Abarths. Which, it, it, you can it feel feels it. heavy, but not, not stupid, does no. it? It's one of those where it's the Honda E. Loved it. Would have one, but not at that not price. Not at that price, no. Now the Honda E's are coming down a bit. Well, you can get one for 18 and a half that's like two or three year old. It's almost. So, again, on the used market, I'm going to absolutely be keeping my eye on these things. Ready? Go for it. Oh. <laughs> They've seemed to have uh, managed that comfort slash sportiness. Oh, perfectly. I mean, I'm not uncomfortable at all, whereas some sporty cars can be a bit jarring. It still seems to be fine at lower speeds as well, but some cars that you have to go at speed yeah. to actually get. I mean, it's a bit these weird. roads are, are really brilliant, bad, and it's, yeah. but it's actually coping quite really well. well. And the brakes, uh, you know, more than adequate. It's, it's very predictable, and you, it gives you a lot, gives you a lot, quite a bit of confidence from the, you know, from the very start, doesn't it? Really? Maybe that's the best descriptor for it. It's so predictable, so you feel like confident. In pushing yeah. it forward you know it, and the thing is because it hasn't got 300 horsepower you can confidently put your foot to the floor and even if it does hey, jiggle a little bit it's all manageable without it's ending not, up in a, that hedge or something it's not dangerous yeah, at the end of the road. i think i say that most people run out of talent before the car that's it yeah but with this you're not yeah yeah you're not going to are you unless no. you're really really silly fun without being dangerous which yeah. is exactly what you kind of want out of a cheap life <laughs> <laughs> the in-gear acceleration is it's where it's rapid. at. Yeah, yeah. It's that torque just fires you out, doesn't it? And it's quicker round. I can't remember the name of the track now. Uh, than is the it their uh, test track? Than the 695. Yeah. Well, it's whether you like it or not. It's got less power, more weight, and it's quicker. Does yeah. it rob you of pleasure? Lack of manual gearbox in a modern car? I think so. I think that it, it does. It does. It, it, you do miss that. And mm, you, and mm. I dare say I do miss the engine note, yeah. proper one. But I do find that it's that much fun that you don't notice it as much as other cars. Look at that, 30, ah. 60. It's honestly quite <laughs> pins your back. Pins you, back in the passenger yeah. seat, you feel it a lot more than that the That feels quicker seat. than 150 brake horsepower, yeah. quite frankly. That's one thing that a lot of EVs suffer from, isn't it? As soon as you get above 50, maybe 60, you run out of puff. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas this is the other way around. It's still got a, plenty of torque, hasn't it? Yeah. 
although it only goes up to 97, 98 miles per Again, hour at top speed, which that. is, yeah, it does egg you on, doesn't it? I'm behind this guy, overtake. I want to overtake him. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. You'll be on your way. This will resonate with a lot of people out there. You'd be able to sneak this past your partner, whichever, whether it's male or female, the person who's not a car person. Yep. I'd be able to sneak this past Lorna because it's small, it's cute, it's easy to drive. You can put it in normal mode. And you, yeah. It's a Fiat 500, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I can jump in there and have a bit of fun. You can. It's a great daily. I, this this as, a, as a daily would be perfect. I'm putting this on my watch list for you. For the future. Years. Two, three yeah. years' time, definitely. Would you say you'd have to go for the spec one, though? I think we'd have to go for the, is it Turismo? Turismo, yeah. Which comes with the Alcantara dash. That makes it feel more special. And the Alcantara seats, mm. steering wheel, JBL sound system, heated seats. The purists won't like it, will they? No, I, I guarantee I that. I don't, but I don't think they could ever. The thing is, it, 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 the world is changing. Yeah, yeah. And you, you're not going to appeal to those people. It's, it's And they have tried to with the engine, though. Yeah. But I don't think you're going to. We're a dying breed. We are. So 120, 240 miles. Range. I think that's realistically what you're going to see out of it. So you're looking normally. at 30. I mean, the official range is like 35 miles less, I believe, than the 500 it's based on. Yeah. There's a roughly £11,000 difference between this and the cheapest our bath. So the cheapest this, cheapest wow. our bath. That's a, that's a big jump. Yeah. But I would argue that this is more comfortable, the a chassis, lot more comfortable. The chassis seems there. Yeah. More practical, it's probably slightly bigger, the seat position's better. If you can charge at home, which is a big caveat, it's substantially cheaper to run. Massively. You don't have to have certain, uh, how shall I put this delicately, Reliability worries. No, there's not much. There's nothing to go wrong. It will probably go down as much as the Abarth do. So ultimately, it's going to be worth a lot more than the three-year-old equivalent. So I know you're spending more, but are you getting it back? Most of it back at the end. I think you'll be getting it's, it's at the I, trading. I, I think you're going to lose as much money as you do on the yeah. uh, the, the petrol. Probably. Which is why we keep saying on the used market it's going to be a cracker. It is it absolute is. cracker. We always say, do we? What do they say you're getting? What do you get? Where's the yeah. disappointment or do you think you're getting more than you expect? You're not buying this if you've got three kids and two dogs. No, and you're not doing long journeys either. No. So, if you bought this, whether it's used or new, for me, your expectation is set. Yeah. Is it above that or lower than that? that I think it's... I'd say slightly above. Yeah, it's in price to one side, I think, yeah. Got personality. Personality is important to me. Yeah. It won't be to a lot, but if you don't want a, pers- a car with personality, get an you, get the Fiat, uh, the Fiat 500, <laughs> you get the Fiat You get the Fiat 500 standard. You do. And even that though, that wasn't a bad drive. No. Interestingly enough, though, the spec versions of the standard 500 yeah. are the same price as Turn the left. entry level one of this. Yeah, yeah. Second left. I think I would go for the entry level one, one of this these. over yeah. the respect up Fiat 500. Yeah. Do you know what else exceeds expectations, actually? We haven't mentioned. Go for it. Being a member on this channel. It does, yeah. For 99p, you get these videos on Sunday instead of Friday. Wow. And a second channel as well called Driving Home with the podcast on that channel and behind the scenes Footage. videos such as this event. Yeah. Uh, so, so if you want to see behind the scenes. Yep. There you go. It's a free channel. Go oh, and yeah. subscribe. Subscribe. So thanks for watching, guys. Ah! <laughs> it's good fun though, <laughs> isn't it? I'm pushing it to it, not its you know, not even to its limits, but I'm having fun. So uh, thanks for watching. See you soon. See you later. Bye. Bye.